Now let's visit two of the most influential animals in the history of this planet. They've shaped the forests, they've shaped the landscape, and have done so for eons. The ant and the earthworm. They're so important that there are two branches of science dedicated solely to them. Myrmecology, a big word, the science of studying ants. Oligoketology, another big word, the science of the studies of the earthworm. Without them, agriculture and food production as we know it would be impossible. They also make fabulous pets but they need special places to live. And this is where the wild science kits are so perfect. And now, let's visit the world of ants. Now we're in the upland forest where it's nice and dry and we found an ant colony and it's under this rock. I have my wild science ant catcher jar and my spoon. Now, the ants under this rock are rather small but they're fine for a wild science kit but they'll allow me to show you one method that we use to catch ants. This is an ant catcher, this is a spoon. Maybe you can see there are ants running around carrying what look like eggs. Well, those are ant larvae. I disturbed this rock just a few minutes ago. Now I'm going to see how many we can catch. I take the lid off the ant catcher. This is going to happen with blinding speed. Are we ready? Go. I put in some soil. And I put in ants. Ants. A few more ants, maybe 15 or 20 worker ants. I'm going to put the lid on. And there we are. I put the rock down. The little bit of damage that I've caused, those workers will fix inside two days and they'll carry on as normal. I'm not looking for the queen. We'll tell you why later when we get back to the lab. Now I'm going to show you a second way of catching ants. Now the ants are in the nest over here and you can see there are cleared areas around the ants' nest. This is what we call ant trails. I'm going to use this jar to make a trap. I'm going to dig a hole, very loose sandy soil here, which is what ants like of course, and I'm going to bury the jar open in the soil. It doesn't have to be completely underneath. Build up the soil around the sides like this. Now this is not a pit trap where the animals slip in and can't get out just because they slipped in, because the sides are slippery. Ants can walk in and out of this no trouble at all. What is going to put them in this trap is bait. We start with a cotton ball from the Wild Science Kit. In here, I have sugar and water mixed. A lovely syrup. All ants seem to love sugar water. I'm going to take pipette, in the wild science kit. Take one and a half mils of sugar water, which is just the right volume. Put it on the cotton ball. The cotton ball is now full of a syrup. Now the ants will soon set out searching all around here to find out what's happened. They'll discover the sugar water. The first worker that discovers the sugar water will run back and tell the rest of the nest that there is a free feed down the trail and in a few hours time or maybe by tomorrow maybe hundreds of ants will be in this jar all we have to do then is put the lid on and let them join their friends in the ant jungle welcome to the wild science laboratory now i brought my ants up from the forest and on the way, we discovered a nest of larger ants. So I've actually got two groups of ants that we can choose from. And right here, I have the ant jungle kit ready-made, ready to take 
our new visitors. But before we put them in, I'd like to give you a guided tour of the ant jungle. Now, as you can see, it's in two halves, above ground and below ground. Now, we'll start above ground. There are two ramps and across it, there's a stick. Ants love to show you their acrobatic skills as they carry food and sometimes even babies across that bridge. At the ends, we have some cotton balls. This one for water, this one for sugar water. We have cotton balls because the ants don't like to be flooded with free water. They could even drown in it. So the cotton balls hold those liquids. Then we go down below ground. The soil is arranged so it's dark, light, dark, light. Why do we do that? When the ants dig through the soil and make their new chambers, by moving the different colours of dark and light, we can see exactly how much activity those ants are producing inside their nest. Right here in the centre is a maze. If you see here, you can see quite a difficult maze for the ants to solve to get to the centre chamber, and the centre chamber is where the food comes in from the back. In the centre here, you'll also notice that this is a magnifying lens just there. And the ants can get from below ground to above ground through these doors here, here and here. Now all these ants are females. The large ones are called soldiers, the small ones are called workers. And you can see the workers running around with little white maggots. Those maggots are not ants' eggs, they're ant larvae and pupae, and that's the next generation of ants. We don't take the queens, we just make sure that the workers have got larvae and pupae to look after, because those new larvae and new pupae, they will produce the new queens and the new kings, or drones, for the continuing colony. That way, your ant jungle can last for a very, very long time. Now I'd like to show you one way of getting your ants from the ant catcher into the ant jungle. And this is the easiest way of doing it. First of all, I take one tube off the ant jungle. Then I pull some of the cotton ball off like so. And I'm going to block the lower end of the tube. Then I'm going to take this cotton out and I'm going to plug the ant catcher onto the top port here. Now this is the tricky bit. We've got to wait for the soldiers to stop attacking the cotton ball. There we go. Now I'm going to pull the cotton ball out. Yes. And we put the ant catcher on the port like this. Now I'm cutting off some tiny pieces of food. It's a bit of apple. There's a little piece of carrot. And here is a little piece of a dog treat, which has got protein in it or meat. We don't know whether our ants are meat eaters or vegetable eaters, but we'll soon find out when we do some special tests. But in the meantime, just making some bits of food for them. I'll take the plug out of the food chamber. In goes one piece of dog treat. And one piece of carrot. And one piece of apple. That'll be enough for today. We're going to be doing food tests tomorrow. Now, we have our ants safely away in our ant jungle, but we don't really know what they like to eat. So this little experiment is going to be a food preference test for ants. And you can find it in the book, which is in the kit. I'm starting with a piece of cardboard, which I cut out with a pair of scissors. 
cut it out this size so it will slide in like a little drawer into the ant catcher jar. Now you can see I've made some holes in the cardboard. I did that with the hole punch. And on the other side, maybe you can see, I've sealed it with sticky tape. So here I've got six little wells that I can put food into. Look at the foods. Here I have carrot, apple and celery. That's fruit and vegetables for the herbivores. I have a meat stick and cheese. That's for the carnivores. And in between, I've got a cheese cracker, which I figured might be halfway between the two for the omnivores. Of course, omnivores will eat all of those. Omnivore, eat everything. Now, the first thing I need to do is to record which foods go into each one of these wells. I'm going to mark this one. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two and three are going to be my fruit and vegetables. So I'm going to take a tiny bit of carrot and I'm going to put three pieces into number one. I'm going to do the same thing with each of the other foods. Here's the last little bit of cracker. Now there's our little food tray. I'm going to put it into the ant catcher jar. And I'm putting the lid on the jar so the ants can walk straight out onto their food choice tray. Now to put the food choice jar in position, I need to take off this tube. And this tube, very quickly, I put a cotton ball in the bottom. And I put the food choice test at the top. Now all we have to do is wait. Now there are loads and loads of exciting experiments and activities you can do with your ants in this booklet. Also in the booklet is an ant diary. How do you record what's happening in this amazing kit? We suggest using a ruler and a marker pen and dividing the back of the ant jungle with a grid. For instance, overnight our ants have dug a tunnel from A4 to C4. Now, I can tell if they've extended that tunnel even by a little bit because I have a grid on the back of this nest. Now, right here, they've started digging at F3 and in only an hour, they've dug through to G3. It's very easy and it's a very, very good scientific way of telling people exactly what's happening with your ant jungle. Now there are lots and lots of other experiments you can do with your ants, all very safe, very humane for the ants. A lot of them are in here. You can invent a lot yourself. For instance, what about feeding your ants a tiny bit of sugar water every morning, but just before you do, you call breakfast, like that? Will the ants start to think every time you call breakfast? Will they think they are going to be fed? Do they recognise your voice? Try it for seven days, see what happens. Then ask mum to call breakfast to the ants. Will they understand breakfast or are they listening for your voice? Crazy ideas, I wonder how smart ants really are. Can ants see the difference between light and dark? They seem to spend their whole time underground or just running around blindly. You can find out. All you need is a torch. Now you can make up so many of these activities. Tell us, tell the world at wildscience.net all about your amazing ant discoveries. Thanks for joining me in the Wild Science Lab. See you next time.